guys, welcome back to the channel. Right now, we are at Cecil Street Market, which is known to be one of the biggest food courts in Georgetown, Penang. Over here, you can find a variety of Penang street food, and we're gonna check out some of the best things to eat here. It's gonna be a feast, so let's go! Let's go! For tourists like us, this red market would have been mistaken for just another local market. It took us a little bit of research before finding out that this place has quite a number of amazing Penang food, all under one roof. The official name of this market is called Susil Street Market, but the locals here know it better as the 7th Street Market. Probably it has something to do with the fact that it's exactly 7 streets away from the Komta Tower. The market itself is split into two parts. On one side is where you can find everyday goods like fresh food, clothing and household items. And on the other side, it's entirely a food court. Inside the food court, you'll see row after row of food stalls selling a variety of Penang street food. And the best part is, you can rarely find stalls that sell the same food. But we have to admit that looking for a specific stall in here is quite an adventure on its own. However, navigating through this maze-like layout is like diving through the local culture. Alright, so first off, I'm going to have one of my favourites, the Kuei Teo Teng, And this place is really famous for it. It's called the Lam Lai Dark Meat Kuei Teo Teng. Lam Lai has been serving up delicious bowls of dark meat Kuei Teo Teng for over 30 years. If you don't know what Kuei Teo Teng is, it's literally translated as flat rice noodles soup. It does resemble the Vietnamese pho, but despite the similarities, this dish has its own character and flavour. Just look at how pretty it looks. It has so much of the ingredients right on top of it. The crispy pork lard, the shredded duck meat on top, the spring onions, some deep fried garlic, fish ball. There's some fish cakes in there as well. It looks like there's two different meats. I think one is chicken and the other is duck. Alright, gotta try the broth first. Here it goes. Whoa. It does look like a very light soup, but it has a lot of rich flavours in it. You can tell that this broth is clearly the result of both the chicken and duck meats being boiled for hours and hours. The duck meat itself oozes a delicious meat sweetness that gives this bowl a burst of umami. As usual, I like always put some chilies into my spoon. Mm. Everything just goes really well together. It's so flavorful and the broth itself is packed with a lot of flavors. Definitely recommend you guys get this. Of course, breakfast isn't complete yet. There's still more to come. One of my favorite drinks to have in the morning is definitely the old classic Kopitiam coffee. Oh, it's so good. So what we got here is the Chinese pastries. And this is probably a really famous one. This is called the Yao Cha Kwai. Definitely have to tear this out. I'm going to share this with Sue. There you go. One for Sue, one for me. Alright, this is something that I've never really done before but I've seen people doing it. Is to dip this into the coffee. But you have to use the hot coffee for this, otherwise it will taste weird. Mmm, oh, it's pretty good. <laughs> this is a chocolate, it's very crispy. Got a salty flavour there as well. And it's actually rather oily. <laughs> Dipping it in the coffee, surprisingly good. As for myself, I love my Yao Cha Kwai with half boiled eggs. So I've ordered half boiled eggs and also some toast, kaya and butter toast. What I personally love to do is to take my Yao Cha Kwai and dip it into the egg. So it gets the eggy goodness. Try this. I just love the crunchy texture from the Yao Cha Kwai and the creaminess from the egg. This is my all-time favourite combo. Love this. So what I have here is the toast with butter and kaya. They've actually separated this one. They even have some sugar beside. I think it's for the butter. I'm going to try with the kaya toast. Mm. It's funny how in Penang, they serve the half boiled eggs in cups. Like cups literally. Cute. I forgot to add the soya sauce and the pepper in it. Okay, I love my pepper. Mm -hmm. Almost got choked of pepper. <laughs> this is one of my favorite breakfasts. I can have half wallets almost every morning. I do it at home. 
So another Chinese pastry that is recommended to get over here is this kat chong, which is basically glutinous rice in this pastry. Let's try this out. Mm. The crust outside is a little bit crispy and salty. Then the rice is more towards the sweet side. We also got ourselves hum ching pang. This hum ching pang comes with a red bean. There you go, there's some red bean paste inside. Kind of looks like dorayaki. Oh, it's really good. The dough is nice and brady and a little bit salty, but the filling, they're very generous with the filling. It's creamy and sweet. The red bean paste is very fragrant as well. The market has these sitting areas in between the stalls. Sitting here, we can pretty much watch the life of this market surrounding us. And if you listen carefully, you can hear the clanking of the walk in the distance, which takes us to the next spot on our list. This unnamed stall can only be identified by this sign. The uncle here uses the traditional method of frying with charcoal fire. He even lifted his wok to show us the charcoal, but unfortunately, we missed the opportunity to catch it on camera. It smells so good, and uncle say it's fried with charcoal fire. Man, can't wait to eat this. Another dish we got is the charcoal fried fried kway tiao. It looks amazing, it smells amazing. We were just standing right in front of the uncle frying it. There's just so much heat there, it was getting hot. Can't wait to eat it. So there's like a couple of chunky prawns there. We've got the fried kway tiao with egg. You have an option of no egg as well. There's the chives, the green sprouts. One thing about the fried kway tiao here, it has lap chong, which is the Chinese sausage. Let's give this a try, let's dig in. Mm. Oh, it's spicy. Straight away, that wok hei just kicks me on my face. It is packed with wok hei. And it's very spicy. It's getting more and more spicy. Just love the crunch from the chives, the bean sprouts. And also the egg adds the creamy texture to the chow kuei tiao. Just love it. Mmm. The whole plate is just so aromatic. We have the prawn. Mmm. The really fresh. Love the ayani taste. And the prawn, prawn is very fresh as well. It's perfectly cooked, still springy. It's really good chow kuei tiao. There's also an option for duck egg, but I just want to try the original chicken egg chow kuei tiao. This is five ringgit. The duck egg one is additional 30 cents. So if you're into duck egg, you can try it as well. On a hot day like this, I love to get my barley ice. Ah, so refreshing. As we get closer to lunchtime, the crowds seem to be building up and we notice long queues are starting to form everywhere. The biggest attraction here has to be the massive food option. There's everything from light snacks, heavy meals to desserts. And speaking of desserts, we'll end our feast with some pasenbor and kuei. Alright, so what I have here is the pasenbor and this has a little bit of a Chinese twist to pasenbor. The pasenbor is basically rojak but in a very different style. So in KL, we call this rojak, but in Penang, this is pasenbor because rojak would be the one with fruits. It's really just coated with a lot of the sauce. There's some shredded mangkwang there, which is also known as the yam bean. So this pasenbor actually comes with jellyfish. Very interesting twist to pasenbor, of course. As usual, you have the deep fried fritters, lots and lots of vegetables down there. There you go, this is a tofu as well. Let's just dig in. Mm. Oh, I really love that sauce. It's a little bit potato-y. It's very creamy and thick and a hint of spice. It's more towards the sweet side, but it's so flavorful. There's not much flavor from the jellyfish. It kind of like blends in together with the vegetables, all the crunches and the sauce from there. Basically just feels like another vegetable in there. Overall, I think this is a really good passing bowl. I'm really enjoying this. You guys should try it out. Alright, so we're going to finish out our session here with some desserts. And for desserts, we got ourselves a bunch of kueis. I've got like, I think six different kueis. I'm going to try a few right now. The kue lapis, which is the layer kuei. Oh, it's good. It's very, very creamy. Very, very soft and bouncy. Not overly sweet. Next, I got is the tapioca kuei. Some burnt chart parts on the sides. Feels a little bit like glutinous rice, but it's tapioca. Oh, it's flavorful, it's rich, it's nice and soft, and it's not overly sweet as well. 
This is my all-time favorite. It's called the Anku, also known as the Red Turtle. Because it kind of looks like a turtle shell. Inside this is actually some mung beans in there and a nice gelatin layer outside. Let's try this out. Mm. Oh, the outside skin is nice and gooey. The inside of the filling is a little bit more, has a very mild sweetness. I usually prefer it to be a little bit more sweeter than this. So the kueh I got here is actually Sue's favorite kueh. It's got the sticky rice at the bottom and some kaya on top. With uh, the coloring of the blue came from the butterfly pea flower. Mm. The kaya is nice and sweet and creamy. The rice is very nicely cooked, so good. There are quite a variety of other kueh as well. You guys can come here and try it out. It's definitely one of the recommended foods to get from Sisu Street Market. I am super stuffed right now. There is just so many things to eat in this market. It is endless. <laughs> we'll be leaving more information about this place in the description below so you guys can go check it out. And if you like this video, please give us a thumbs up and subscribe to us if you like to follow us on our travel and food videos. And as always, thank you guys so much for watching. We'll see you guys in the next video. Bye guys! Yes,